Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm really glad and honored to be here in front of you after actually using Blender for almost three years. So I'm baby Blender to you. <laughs> and OK, I'm Ahmed al -Ajiri. I'm an architect, architectural engineer, if you may mix it with another architect. And guess what? I'm from Baghdad, Iraq. But uh, I didn't come away all the way from Iraq. I'm actually studying, uh, preparing my master's degree in uh, University of Page in Hungary. So, uh, so we are talking about, uh, today about the industry standard uh, software that we use uh, in architecture. So, uh, once you uh, graduate from uh, like ar architectural uh, uh, university or uh, from the university as an architect, like you have to uh, like apply for a job to uh, to a certain company or a studio, and you have to use the softwares or learn the softwares they uh, use in their like industry in the uh, product in their production line. So, uh, and as a, an architect, you have to learn like four different types of of softwares. You have the 3D Studio and the uh, BIM software render engine and the video rendering, and these what they call the industry standard softwares. Okay, so the requirement for work as as an architect. Uh, like you have to uh, like learn a combination of uh, softwares uh, in order to get accepted in uh, in this job. So uh, like uh, after like applying for so, for uh, some uh, like um, for uh, some studios and companies, I like get some experience of what they use and uh, uh, what they want in their. Uh, uh, to, to select their candidates and things. So as you can see here, like uh, Revit and Lumion, uh, ArchCAD and Lumion, Rhino, uh, Revit, 3 ds Max, Corona, uh, ArchCAD, Cinema 4D, Octane, and others. So you can see all of them, like uh, the price of all this package uh, going around like $4,000, uh, dollars, US dollars. And uh, it doesn't get lower, and you can you can't just use one software. You have to like uh, to have uh, like this combination of softwares to, to get accepted. And this is not affordable for uh, for a an, like newly graduate uh, architect, especially like from Iraq. Uh, it is like maybe you guys are rich. I don't know. <laughs> and so after like uh, I introduced to Blender and I came across Blender. Uh, I found like uh, it lies in these categories in 3D soft like uh, 3D Studio does it has uh, a built-in render engine to render engines and uh, it can do video rendering and walkthrough but it doesn't do the BIM uh, work like uh, the work of floor plans uh, sections and things you need for for the building like the technical drawings yeah so I was amazed and uh, surprised uh, that Blender can do all the modeling, rendering, video walkthrough, animation, uh, all this, uh, procedural modeling, procedural texturing, and all for free, like uh, <laughs> what I've been using. Like. So uh, this is using Blender uh, in the architectural process. This is my process that I follow uh, in the using of uh, Blender in the architectural industry. So I do the site analysis, uh, the conceptual design, uh, then I do the technical drawings and uh, like uh, the sections, plans, and things using uh, Revit. Then I export it as an FBX, then do, uh, complete the exterior design and uh, interior design, then the environmental design, like designing the environment and the landscape. After that, uh, the visualization, rendering, maybe animation, uh, the last thing is the post-production or the compositing. So uh, here you can see how I use uh, it for set analysis. This is my, uh, the process. We go in detail. So uh, the first thing I use, uh, like uh, here, uh, an add-on, a free add-on. It's called Blender GIS. It's so useful. It can give us the, uh, the neighboring buildings using data from uh, Google. So here you can see I'm just following like simple steps, like uh, I'm changing this uh, plane. I don't like it. I always change it. I don't know why. Uh, then I'm using uh, geometry nodes. I'm turning the um, the streets from from uh, mesh to curve and back to to mesh. Then I give it this thickness. 
And the last thing is rendering to see like the, the light, the interaction of the light with the urban fabric and the city. Yeah, this is, uh, I'm using here the same, the same add-on to, to get the topo topography, the topology, uh, or the terrain uh, of, of the land because it's so uh, important in case you, uh, the land is, is not uh, like uh, is not flat or something. You have to get this information for this site analysis. Yeah, so here you can uh, just use like a displacement map, put it in uh, like a, uh, using the displacement uh, modifier, then the uh, array modifier, putting some planes, then the uh, uh, solidify, and that's just simple steps, and now we have a terrain model. And it's not like that, so I'll change it. Yeah. And we can see also using the sky, uh, sky texture to, to see the, the interaction of, of light and uh, with, with the terrain, with the old things. Here, uh, the conceptual design, so, uh, you can't you can just come with, the, with the, like a building out from your mind just, just like that. You have to like start experiments, start to uh, get inspirations and, and things. So uh, this is so useful in Blender. So uh, I'm using here geometry nodes. It's uh, so inspiring. So you can make a, a lot of models. You can uh, like uh, experiment with a lot of things, a lot of possibilities to make uh, like a conceptual design in using the freestyle uh, tool to get these lines uh, that I'm using here. So just making some cutouts, some things, maybe the openings, just like an insp uh, inspiration, like how, how the uh, building uh, will be and how it will interact with the light, with the, with the uh, uh, things. Then we, after the conceptual design, we like uh, start the actual design with the, um, with Blender then uh, to, to rev it, to, to make uh, the, the, like, uh, the, the real plans and sections and, and things, the real technical drawings, because uh, architecture is not all about visualization. We have detailed work, we have detailed um, sections. And here is uh, using Blender in uh, Exterior and interior design. It's actually is uh, easier than any software like I've used before. So I've used uh, 3ds Max. I've used uh, Cinema 4D. But uh, no one is uh, is this easy. The workflow is not e easier than uh, Blender. And uh, when you like go through the tutorials on YouTube and things, you you don't find like uh, uh, tutorials for. Um, for the architectural for uh, architectural visualization, uh, maybe you can find, but this it's not that uh, much. But uh, uh, the way I'm I'm, le I'm learning Blender and I learned Blender, uh, it's uh, like by watching any tutorial, maybe a tutorial of a headphone or a donut or something. It will uh, it will benefit you in the architectural design because it's the same workflows, it's the same modeling thing. So uh, instead of modeling like a headphone, you can model a building. So here, uh, like with the coming of geometry nodes, it's made it easier for the exterior design, especially when you see uh, nowadays buildings have this parametric uh, shapes, parametric like uh, facades. So uh, with some simple nodes, uh, I'm not an expert in uh, geometry nodes, but I learned some simple nodes to, to make like uh, these facades or uh, parametric facades. Uh, in a way we can uh, change it as non-destructive uh, workflow, so uh, anytime we want, you know, want to change it, we don't have to remodel everything. You just like uh, go tweak some things in the geometry nodes or in the edit mode, and that's it. We can even change the shape, and uh, we have everything. Okay, here, uh, using the same uh, geometry nodes, uh, like we are experimenting with uh, some f facade modeling, the, the modeling of a facade, sometimes you see just like a plain facade. Uh, it's so boring, they add some like dynamic shapes to it, some uh, like, uh, uh, like here you can see I'm uh, scattering some uh, geometries to make this uh, dynamic facade or uh, to make this parametric 
uh, facade. You're just using some cubes, just, you know, maybe like five nodes or, or six nodes, it's, uh, it's easier. Then uh, with the new like field, uh, like field flow of, of, ge of geometry nodes, we can like import uh, textures, uh, noise textures and things, so, uh, or wave texture here to like uh, experiment more uh, and to have more like uh, free um, workflow. Yeah. And here using the geometry nodes uh, with the uh, design of the landscape or uh, the like environmental design. So uh, back in the days before the geometry nodes, it, were, it was uh, so difficult to, to, to model like uh, an environment because uh, you have to um, work maybe with particles and things. You can't, you can't control uh, everything in, in these particles, the scale, the transformation, the, the randomness of, of nature. So here uh, with geometry nodes, it's, it's much easier. You can just paint uh, wherever you want. Maybe with particles you can, but uh, it's easier with geometry nodes. Easier to like uh, control the randomness, to control the, the scale. And uh, here I'm using uh, the uh, botanic from Polygonic. It's really useful add-on. Yeah, just connect some things, make, make or uh, like uh, make my. Uh, a custom um, node, so I can just plug in uh, anything I want and uh, start painting, uh, white painting the the plane and distributing this uh, natural element. And the last thing is the, is the uh, last thing in this uh, uh, workflow pipeline is the visualization which uh, after you use that just uh, rendering, uh, putting the, the sunlight and, and things and uh, start expor uh, exporting uh, photos. And here uh, is the thing the, that so useful that comes with, the, with Blender is the compositing tab or the compositing workflow. Uh, so it's uh, much like useful to have uh, the compositing uh, workflow in the same uh, software and it's also for for free because uh, other uh, companies will require you to have like um, an experience in Photoshop or Lightroom or or something else uh, because you have to edit the photos to have, you have to make it more realistic here you can see I'm using the the mist pass to to get some depth to the to the photo I have like uh, maybe using glare using uh, lens distortion these uh, things give some reality to the uh, uh, to the photo. And uh, we have the, the, the split view, it's so useful to, like, to refresh your eye uh, to see uh, before and after uh, the, the things you add to the, to the compositing tab. So uh, with all that, you can see like Blender can do uh, the site and all the like architectural design procedure from site analysis, conceptual, uh, conceptual design, exterior and interior design, environmental design, visualization, post-production to the uh, finishing of the work. So, uh, and that's all for free. So the question is, uh, which one you think should be the industry standard for architectural design and visualization? Like all these softwares for like, uh, Ton of money, like four thousand dollars or something, maybe more, or just Blender with nothing, <laughs> just zero. Um, yeah, so uh, that's the question. I don't know why the companies kept like uh, requiring uh, new graduate architects to to learn all of these uh, softwares and putting these industry standards uh, softwares to like. Uh, uh, made it uh, like less possible for, for architects or newly graduates to, to find a job, while uh, they neglect uh, Blender or uh, open source software to, uh, that has all this potential to, uh, to make, like, to, to express the creativity of, of the architects. So uh, last thing I would, I would thank to all uh, the, everyone contributed in the making of Blender and uh, I would like to thank 
the Blender community and all bl Blenders on YouTube who made uh, uh, learning Blender actually free and, and easy. And um, yeah, uh, without you guys, uh, we would be unemployed now. <laughs> Thank you.